Human Life Forms and Civilizations in the Known Universe. 2. By Guest Author November 28, 2022. Guest Article by Burke Gumus. In the Contact Report 228, it is mentioned that total universally alone in our material space-time structure estimated 6,000 to 7,000 billion actual human civilizations of high and low form exist. About the possible appearance or the peculiarities of extraterrestrial people, no borders are set to the fantasy. Because naturally, their inhabitants inside are adapted to the respective planets and bases of life. The living conditions, for example the gravity or the atmosphere of a planet, are decisive factors for the anatomical appearance and the shape of their inhabitants. Accordingly, in the vastness of the universe there is everything in appearance and peculiarities what the earth man can imagine, and also everything what he cannot imagine. 228th Contact Monday, the 1st of May, 1989, 1805, HRS. Actual cohesive advanced human civilizations are known to us in this galaxy only 2.63 million, with 1.141 billion, 1 billion, 141 million, from other galaxies known to us to add to that. Actual low evolved civilizations in this galaxy, which you call the Milky Way, are known to us at 1.04 million. Overall, universally in your material space-time structure, our scientists estimate that there should be about 6 to 7 trillion, 6 trillion to 7 trillion actual human civilizations of high and low form. What do you mean by actual cohesive human civilizations? By this is meant the coherence of the totality of progress created by science and technology, which also includes developed and improved medical, social and material living conditions and so on. 469th Contact Monday, the 11th of August, 2008, 18 o'clock, HRS. Then I would like to give you information, whereby I name the individual life forms according to how it makes sense to Earth humans and how they also understand it. Thus I will begin with us actual humanoids, whereby I must explain that all life form species, which I have to call, show human or human-like forms in shape, as well as forms mixed with their other species, whereby the only human-like beings are not actual humanoids, but just different and embodying two different species. All of them, however, are capable of a conscious development of consciousness, have their own cultures and languages as well as techniques, whereby some of the ones we know are also masters of space travel and belong to our Federation. All of them, at least those who belong to our Federation, are peaceful beings and have no warlike or violent ambitions. All visuals in this article are only possible appearances and locations. Humanoids are human beings in the form in which we Playarans and the Earth humans as well as many of us are allies of our Federation, to which, however, other life forms also belong, which cannot be called humanoids in our sense, because they are of a completely different kind but nevertheless consciously capable of evolution and have developed their own cultures and techniques as well as languages, as I already explained. Amphiboids are, in terms of form, life forms of mixed human and aquatic animal nature, which can live both in water and on land, as well as in a climate that is heavily water-filled. Asina, for example, and her people are among them. Asina comes from the system Deneb. Her origin is a very swamp and watery world, and she has the appearance of a lizard creature by earthly standards. Ninety-first contact, Thursday, the seventeenth of November, nineteen seventy-seven, seventeen twenty-four, HRS. The Signer represent a human race whose senses are highly sensitized to swinging waves from outside their own bodies, but only in planetary or ship internal regions. Thus, they are able to receive and analyze swinging waves of all life forms. And here lies the answer to your question. The Signer have a form of government on their home worlds, which your Earth humans designate as herd instinct but which is nevertheless led by the strongest of the herd. 
So this order is a resemblance of a herd order in animals, the strongest of which exercises the position of the leading animal. Since the signer had held this form of government since time immemorial, they changed it in the course of the last millennia only to the extent that they replaced the strongest of their kind with the most knowledgeable in spiritual matters, who thus was also the one who emits the highest swinging waves, which is synonymous with the most powerful swinging waves. Thus, it is only natural that on foreign worlds, when they visit such worlds intentionally or unintentionally, the signer search for their kind and their form of government also for the highest spirit knowledge based swinging waves of this world, and if necessary, turn to it when they need it. And through your spiritual teaching, also known as creation energy based learning and your knowledge, you are the person on the earth who gives off this highest swinging wave from himself. This again means for the signer that, for them, you are that form of life on this world in respect of that mentioned, above which no other form of life stands. This alone can be the reason why they try to connect with you. A 93rd Contact, Tuesday the 29th of November 1977, 043 HRS. How did it actually end with the Signer girl who you fetched last Saturday, November 26th, after my calling? Everyone is with us at the station, including her ship, whose intergalactic propulsion was destroyed by an explosion. For this reason, it will take a long time before we have repaired the ship, after which it will be returned to the home world. But spare parts could be brought in from the home planet. Unfortunately, this is not possible, because for this outdated technology, the necessary knowledge is missing there too. And furthermore, the signers are technologically absolutely untalented, which is why they are not able to repair their technological devices, etc., themselves. That is not possible. But that is so. And how long were they underway now? And why did they even come into our system? And they were underway for four long years, more than two years, of which they drove in free fall through space after the explosion of the propulsion unit. By free fall, you mean they were drifting through space without a drive, right? Certainly. Aha, and they reached here through the space driving. Certainly. That they did not starve to death. They spent the time in artificial deep sleep and therefore needed no food. I understand. Maybe they were still lying in water tanks and were woken up by a robot after a long bath. Sure, but how do you know? I've seen such scenes in utopian movies before. Are you twisting my arm? That is no joke. Huh? I said it was not a joke. You mean? Certainly. It's like I explained. That is not possible. Man, oh man, then the fantasies of the utopian writers are not even far-fetched. You also write in an inspiring form. Of course, I should know that. But tell me, the short conversation last Saturday with the little child, is it not possible that it will be passed on to me like you did the reports? It would be very interesting for us. And can I see the thing again and maybe take a picture of her? Sure, all this should be possible. I will ask Asina. That's how the little child introduced herself to me. Sure, Asina is a very kind being. I noticed that, damn it, huh? I almost got scared after all. I did not know that they had similar customs to us in certain relationships. Ha 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 ha. Just enjoy yourself. Maybe it will happen to you too. Sure, but it is. Ha ha ha. I was surprised too. Then the little girl pressed her cold fish frog beak to your cheek. It seemed to me like a kiss. Sure, and it should also be a kiss, because that is the signer's regular greeting form. Reptiloids are life forms of mixed human and reptilian form, their bodies being covered with scales. Eye insectoids are life forms of mixed human and insect like form, their skin showing chitin like characteristics. Chitin is a resistant cell structure in, for example, insects, crustaceans, and fungi.
The chitin contained in mushrooms is an indigestible fiber and makes these difficult to digest. In insects and crustaceans, chitin is found in the exoskeleton. Chitin close up. I sauroids are life forms of mixed human and sauropod like form with a skin similar to elephant skin. A primatoids are life forms of mixed human and primate like form with a hairy body, but in a stronger form than the terrestrial humanoid or earth humans. Achondicoids are in form of life forms actual humanoids, but with the ability to move by levitation. In Contact Report 465, it is mentioned that the so-called Salbides with their reddish glowing eyes also move by levitation. Whether condicoids and salbides are one and the same or two separate species remains open. 465th Contact Wednesday, the 7th of May, 2008, 1548, HRS, E. On my great journey, I observed not one. But it would be very interesting if I could see them. Apart from the salbidin with their reddish shining eyes, which fly through the air and also sat on the ridge of our center roof, I have not seen any. The Salbidin are not chimeras, but floating, as the term Salbidin expresses. They are purely human life forms and float through the air by levitation, but also walk on the ground in a normal way. Ah, pteropoids are life forms with human and bird like body, with long neck, face, and beak like mouth. Further explanations about the pteropoids from the contact reports in connection with the Easter Islands. 69th Contact. Friday, the 10th of December, 1976, 041 HRS, E. Now, as I once explained to you, the last decisive settlement of the Earth by extraterrestrial intelligences took place about 13,500 Earth years ago. As you know, several of the immigrant horde became renegades, including a man in the rank of a half-ishwish called Virakokoha, who was already very old and extremely power-hungry. His name is still handed down on the earth today, but with a small change, because for a long time now he has only been called Virakocha and also as Shwish, although he was only in half the rank of such a person. Under his patronage and his cruel leadership, the highlands of Tiawanako at an altitude of about 4,000 meters were conquered, as was the Delta Island, which you call Easter Island. After this conquest, Viracocoha settled with a special bodyguard of cherubim on the small island Mot, which is situated in front of Easter Island and which you call Motunui, or similar to my knowledge today. At that time, it was called Mot, because the cherubim were animal human life forms. In this case, they were all bird like. Hey, images of Vera Kokoha with his special cherubim pteropoid bodyguards in Tiawanako on the Gateway of the Sun. Images of the cherubim, respectively pteropoids, on the island Motunui. Amat means bird in our original language, so the island was called the Mot Island, or also the island of the bird people, as it is still called today. So Viracocoha or Viracocha resided there. He and his followers, escaped Lyrans like many others, who came to the earth, were of gigantic physique, by earthly measure about 11 meters tall.
Hydroids are life forms with human and fish-like bodies, whose actual life element is water, which they can also leave for a longer period of time. Am in the Chaldean and Babylonian mythology, there is also what appears to be a type of hydroid whose name is Oannes. Ansoan's mythology, a famous deity of the ancient Chaldeans and Babylonians, sought and depicted as a sea monster. His figure had human formation, head, body, hands, and feet, but ended in large and terrible fish body. Deep in the Red Sea was his dwelling, from which he rose every morning and went to Babylon to teach wisdom and order, laws and religion, art and science. This being spent his day among people, he gave people the ability to grasp scriptures and sciences and all kinds of arts. He taught them to build cities, temples, compile laws, and all the principles of geometry. He showed them how to discern the seeds of the soil, how to gather the fruits, in short, everything that would soften their behavior and add human qualities to their lives. And when the sun set, this being called Oan returned to the water and spent the night in the deep because he was amphibious. After that, other creatures like Oans appeared. Fish worship and sanctification was a basic trait in the cults and mythic history of the Syrian and neighboring peoples. Many think that Oannes is identical with the idol Dagon, as from the flood the earth rose forming to the light. So the ancient people mystics also let gods and people emerge from it. And so there are related everywhere, just as the fish god Oannes brings out law and teachings from the sea depth. So the Indian Vishnu, the Holy Law, books Veda. Almost every one of these mystics offers inexhaustible material for the pensive thinking. Sources, http slash w. Zeno. Org slash Damon Convlex. 1834 slash a slash oans plus mythology. https slash ww. Bilimveyaratili Sagachi. Com slash tag slash Oannes Veyunis slash from the 725th contact report one can take out that there are probably two different races of intelligent sea creatures, the silvery ones that reside on certain lakes and the others that reside in the oceans. 725th contact Saturday the 12th of October 2019, 2358 HRS. Explanations should always be detailed and in such a way that they can really be understood. Unfortunately, however, you are not allowed to say everything openly, and you are not allowed to talk about many things, such as certain things of a certain earthly technical and digital development, as well as the silvers in the lake and in certain seas, etc. Whether Oans, the famous deity mentioned in the mythology, has any relation to the lakes and sea creatures mentioned in the contact reports remains to be seen. 251st Contact, Friday, the 3rd of February, 1995, 001, HRS. By this back manipulation, the human being will reach a still much higher age than this is already reached by earlier interventions by the earthly genetic scientists, and by what the average age of life of the earth people rises to about 400 years. However, what will be reached now in new form, then moves in a lifespan of the human being, which must be set extremely high and calculated with thousands of years. In the following next few years, it comes then so far that intelligent sea inhabitants begin to communicate with the people and to take up contact with them, from which the new foundation of a new earth inhabitant race arises. However, this will also be the time when aggressions with the Martians will start, which will actually lead to attacks on the colonies. Thermoids are in shape humanoid life forms with a human like body whose own life element is hot areas with very high temperature.
A. Frigoroids are in form humanoid life forms with human bodies, whose life elements are very cold areas with very low temperatures below zero. Uh, Aerioids are in form humanoid life forms with human bodies, whereby they are poison gas breathers, and their life element are various gas atmospheres. Concerning the appearance of the gas breathers respectively, poison gas breathers the following is reported in the book Talmud Emanuel by Billy Meyer, German edition, chapter 4, page 49, German English edition, page 98. In the palace of Ishwish, there appeared to Emanuel two very tall men, such as he had never seen on earth. Their face shone like the sun shone in love, their eyes were like burning torches, the eyeballs were red, not white like the people of the earth, and out of their mouths came fire-spoken words of wisdom and warm, steaming breath. These fire people grew 3.54 meters tall. Their clothes were like resembled, a spread of foam, and their arms were like golden wings loose, fluttering clothes and like in fire blazing and colored sleeves. They lived in a world protective suits of their own, because the breath air, they were gas breathers, of this earth world would have killed them. These two seven stars men were wholly venerable, teachers, together with two smaller grown men, who thus spoke that they were Bawi men, extraterrestrials from the Bawi areas equals a planet, which is called Bawi, size of the men 230 to 250 centimeters. Thakaroids are in form humanoid life forms with a human body, but their skin is covered by a fine layer of acid, like for example the Trilands. Three hundred and sixty second contact Friday, the second of July two thousand four, zero forty two HRS corrosive visit to the Simyase, Silver Star Center, Hinterschmidruti, or extraterrestrial humans of a special kind. It is known that the Playarans Federation includes human beings of the most diverse anatomical forms. They differ in size, color, and appearance. Some members of the Federation can only move around in the Playarans' large ships with special breathing apparatus. The Playarans and similar terrestrial oxygen atmosphere is poisonous for them. Others have no trouble breathing our air. So also not the so-called Trilans or Acid Humans, as they are called by Billy, who recently visited the center. During the six-week absence of Florina and Injana, Two Trilan humans have taken over their substitutes for the various control tasks on our planet. For this reason, in the early morning hours of the 26th of June, 2004, a Trilanian alliance couple was present at the center in Hinterschmidruti. The two of them had left their ship in order to take a little walk on the center grounds. The two little persons were a female life form called Sistana and her ally called Ipral. The trilaners are about 110 to 120 centimeters tall, light green in color and completely hairless. A very special characteristic of these humans, however, is that their green skin is covered with a thin film of acid that is slightly corrosive. This peculiarity means that they should not be touched by humans of a different species, as this can lead to painful burns. In the course of the past years, Billy Edward Albert Meyer, Billy Edward Albert Meyer, had the opportunity to meet these humans three times. One of these meetings took place in the Ptah metropolitan area. In order to test the effect of a contamination with their skin and its secretion, Billy touched one of these humans with his middle finger. The incipient chemical burn left him feeling a burning sensation like nettles for about 18 hours while his finger was still reddened for about three weeks. The Trilanian couple Sistana and April have left their mark on the center. During their walk in the early morning hours, they also crossed the upper parking lot next to the tool garage, where the Figu Group vehicle and Atlant Bieri's car are parked. They must have found a very special pleasure in Atlant's vehicle. So one of them put his right arm and both hands on the bonnet of the vehicle and left an etched imprint of the arm and hands in the silver paint of the vehicle. Very clearly visible are the seven fingers of the right hand, 
six fingers and the thumb, as well as the ball of the hand and the forearm. Even the filigree papillary lines of the palm of the hand have been etched into the paint in a clearly visible manner. Further fingerprints can be seen around the vehicle. The etching is so strong that even wind and weather were unable to harm it, although it rained in torrents for quite some time after the incident. The prints were not discovered until around five days after they were made, on the 29th of June. And although it rained heavily several times later and thus in the course of the following weeks and even sleet and fine hail fell, these were still clearly visible even on the 20th of July. All the core group members can testify to the event, as well as several persons unknown to Figu and various passive group members from Germany, Austria, Italy, Switzerland, and New Zealand see 362nd Contact Report, Friday, the 2nd of July, 2004. Hans-Georg Lanzendorf for Switzerland. Ah, floroids are life forms with human-like and diverse plant bodies. Centauroids are life forms with partly human and partly equine bodies. Amphonoids are life forms with partly human and partly various ungulate bodies. From the looks of it, Enkidu, a legendary figure in ancient Mesopotamian mythology, wartime comrade and friend of Gilgamesh, king of Uruk, was also a faunoid. To learn more about Gilgamesh and his special abilities, see article. Origins of Unknown Flying Objects, Extraterrestrials and Other Visitors. Cheruboids are in shape and weight very light human life forms, equipped with feathered wings through which they can fly. Seraphoids are life forms very light in shape and weight, partly human and partly animal, equipped with feathered wings through which they can fly. And other human life forms mentioned in the 173rd contact report, life forms whose eyes shine in strong light. Ah, uh, life forms whose eyes are located on the upper front of the forehead. Ah, uh, life forms who are always jumping around on elevated places like house roofs and trees, etc. Ah, uh, life forms that make you think a rubber ball is rolling across the ground. A life forms that are 70 centimeters in size. 123rd Contact Pentecost. Monday, the 4th of June, 1979. 143 HRS. Thanks. Already since the beginning of the year, every month, I have observed very strange light objects in the vicinity of the center. Interestingly enough, at the beginning of the year, I also received impulses unknown to me from somewhere, which made it clear to me, for the whole year, as to what times these light objects would appear in each case. On the 19th of April now, I could also make slide pictures of these objects in the early morning hours around 2.23 HRS. The crazy thing was that these objects, with which I tried in vain to establish communication by the way, constantly changed their forms. A car's headlights came from somewhere. Then, these objects assumed their forms. They also mimicked my flashlight headlight and the yard lamps and the objects in their original forms look similar to bathtubs, which were sometimes so bright that they seemed brighter than the sun at its zenith.
That is why several films were ruined for me in the middle of the night, due to overexposure. Also, the sizes of the objects constantly changed, so these were to be measured between five meters and several hundred meters. Do you perhaps have an explanation for this, or do you at least know any solution for this? I just wanted to talk about that with you, as it stands in important connection with all of you and us. The objects observed and photographed by you come from the Andromeda areas, and these are fine material flying objects, similar to the bio-organic flying objects that you know. In this case, however, it is such that these flying objects are fine material and not bio-organic, and that these, depending on preference and need, are generated by powers of consciousness from a very highly developed human dwarf race, whose size amounts to approximately 70 centimeters, whereby I speak of body height. This race, which is even unknown to us, is fine-dimensioned and stands in the advice of the High Council, which has sent it here to clarify our interests with you in detail, because it was found that we would not assert ourselves strictly enough. Aha, spies, so to speak. You can call it that after an earthly sense. We, however, call it differently. Anyhow, the High Council became informed and enlightened by these Nabulanians. Ah, Andromeda Galaxy. Life forms with fluorescent bodies. Ah, life forms whose bodies illuminate radiantly. One hundred and seventy third contact, Monday, the ninth of August, nineteen eighty two, nineteen thirty, HRS. That is of correctness. The largest of our allies, Andron, is five meters and twenty six centimeters tall, according to earthly measures, and then there is Danel under him, who is two meters and forty eight centimeters tall. The smallest ones are around seventy centimeters tall, and then there are those whose eyes illuminate very brightly and whose eyes are on the upper forehead of the skull. I know. But then there are those whose entire bodies fluoresce, or those whose bodies illuminate radiantly, along with those who always practice gymnastics on elevated places, such as on rooftops and trees, etc. That is of correctness. But in addition to these, there are still other variously formed life forms, but they are all of human genus and species. Yes, of course, such as one, of whom someone might think that a rubber ball rolls across the ground. Uh, life forms with a large head. Source https slash w. YouTube. Comwatch v equal sign p3 nwmm xplxq. Uh... Some more extraterrestrial intelligent life forms with exotic appearance from the contact reports that were already mentioned in previous articles. But here again, for a better overview, are briefly represented giant of Voronezh Skrill being inhabitant of Agarta, descendants of extraterrestrials, Syrian MIB, E. In Reticillum Android Roswell, 1947, Long Skulls Inhabitant of Shambhala Descendants of Extraterrestrials, Pegasus Refugee. Extraterrestrial Civilizations in the Known Universe I, real-life Star Wars civilization. Three hundred and forty-fifth contact. Monday, the 21st of July, 2003, 1511 HRS. Uh, the second planet, somewhat greater than the Earth, had three large island continents, 
which existed in a large saltwater ocean and were surrounded by a large number of smaller islands. Their entire mass was around one-third greater than the continental masses and islands of Earth together. This planet was at a distance from the sun of 1.48 astronomical units and had a self-rotation of 22 hours and 52 minutes. The planet carried human civilizations. In fact, there were three different races, which consisted of diverse peoples, who were of white, green, and blue color, adding to a total number of around 498 million human beings. Our clarifications which we carried out unobserved and without direct contact undertakings with the occupants, resulted in astonishing things as I want to explain as follows. The populations of the three continents mastered only three different languages, each one with a uniform dialect, which we nowhere else have yet detected. And although the three races work together in every respect, such as medically, scientifically, and technologically, etc., they do not mix with one another in the way that there would exist marriage alliances between members of different races. All three races had the same culture, the same state of knowledge in all things, and a medical science, which, highly developed, registered only just minor sicknesses. So in this respect, they are far ahead of terrestrial medical and surgical science. There was nothing to find regarding religions and cults of any kind because all three races in no way at all recognize faith, but only a kind of universal philosophy, which is based on the fact that all life and existence arises from a higher power, which is simply called the force by them. This is quite reverently observed, respected, and honored, however it is not worshipped and not venerated. The force constitutes for them all origin of life and all existence which both comes to be and again passes away and again comes to be, and a unity in a duality is taught. So the material and the force, which lives in the material, passes away and again comes to be, while the material dissolves and changes into other material forms. This is practically the reincarnation of the spirit form. The force would be then simply creation, and at the same time the spirit form. So it is, just only with other terms, as well as also everything interpreted and understood by the occupants of the planet. Regarding these three races still is to say that they are absolutely peaceful, in fact, both from human to human, as well as, however, also among the races and their peoples themselves. Wars are foreign to them just as well as hate and criminality, and purely technologically viewed, they are at the position which prevailed with Earth humans in the year 1968. Astonishing. Then these human beings are far ahead of Earthlings. However, how is it then with the form of government? Each people decides totally on all interests, although a total representation of all three races exists, which is built in the form of an assembly of men and women, which as highest authority is to gain the required recognition of the will of the people. A little complicatedly expressed, my friend. If I correctly understand your words, then with these three races and their peoples, so to say, there exists a combined leadership, which consists of persons, respectively representatives, of all three races. This leadership personnel exists in the service of the people, respectively of all peoples, and executes their decision. Respectively, they are responsible for the fact that the will of people, respectively peoples, is carried out. Then it is so to say a proper democracy. And how is it with these leadership personnel? Do they have then also their own power of decision? Your interpretation corresponds to the sense of my words. The leadership personnel, which consists of three persons from all peoples, have only executing and advisory powers of the respective peoples, and they do not have their own possibility for decision. All leadership personnel are elevated to the standing of wise persons, whose duty it also is to work out all required necessities and present them to the people, who then decide about them. The three races and all of their peoples have no other party natures at all, like this is the case with earth humans. On the other hand, they have the manner of voting in the way, as was the case since ancient times in Switzerland, in the manner of rural communities, in which the majority decision applied. The interests, on which must be voted, 
are announced first by the leadership personnel on the day of the vote, when the people assemble and have to deliver a, for, or against vote. So therefore no previous consultations are able to be made, consequently each citizen of each people according to his own discretion and in accordance with his decision has to make his own choice. Interesting. How is it then with the military, respectively the armed forces? Here, pure harmony and peace exists among all three races and all of their peoples for a little more than 1,208 planetary years, and also exist no armed forces and no weapons industries for military purposes. And so what about the police? There is no such organization in the way like on Earth. Security personnel are certainly existing, but these constitute an order protection and safety protection which provide for the order and safety of the population regarding natural events, by which I mean events of nature. The races and their peoples themselves live in an order which has no degenerations, like this is the case with the people on Earth. So to speak, an ideal state. In certain respects can actually of an ideal be spoken. What to me is still of interest, dear friend, is their technology of locomotion. Do they have also still such primitive airplanes and automobiles, etc., like we on Earth? This is certainly to be assumed, if they have the technological position, which we possessed in 1968. Am I correct? Your assumption is not entirely correct, because certainly they have a similar technology of locomotion, but the drives are not sustained by explosion motors using benzene and diesel oil, but they are driven with synthetic substances. All three races and all of their peoples do not exploit the petroleum of the world. All necessary substances for all things are from plants of many kinds, as well as produced synthetically. And the food? There exist large community gardens as well as joint farming holdings, like gardens and small farms, which however are also run by individual persons or small groups. And before you ask, there are economically useful animals kept and bred for work and for food purposes, though however any form of cruelty to animals is taboo. Flesh for food of humans is solely produced through breeding and slaughtering of certain animals. Fruits, vegetables, and flesh of many and diverse forms as well as all other necessary food items and required products of other kinds are in abundance and plentiful, and from this follows that nowhere does famine exist. All bodies of waters and forests, meadows, fields, and marsh areas are healthy and completely intact. Chemical products are not laid down for the purposes of protection or growth of plants, but only substances, which in turn consist of natural products. Hunting for any wild game is taboo, because game flesh is likewise only produced through breeding, like this also is the case with fish flesh, etc. Have you also established how old the humans get to be? Uh, naturally. The average age of the humans of all three races is a uniform 128 years, and death as a rule is due to old age. So they are also much ahead of the earthlings in this respect. But what happens to the deceased human beings? I mean, how are they laid to rest, cremated or buried, etc.? The deceased are laid out upon a stone bed far away from residential areas, in especially created for them, individual small yet very stable stone houses, after which the entrance is closed with rocks and boulders. After that, the deceased are left to decompose. Do you mean by this something like a vault? Is it with the bereaved then also as is usual on earth, that they visit these tombs? No, this does not likewise belong to tradition as well as also not the decoration of tombs with flowers, etc. Also, no inscriptions are displayed and no ritual at all is indulged in, at the burial. Among all races exists also no fear of dying and death. The whole thing is considered and honored as a natural and inevitable event. Ah, uh, Chimera Planet. Four hundred and sixty fifth contact Wednesday, the seventh of May, two thousand eight, fifteen forty eight HRS.
Other than our mythologies that speak of chimeras, are there actually such creatures on other worlds? And they do exist, but we know of only one planet where such beings exist. If the opportunity arises, I will take you to a world where several species of chimeras live. That should be possible during my vacation time. I would be delighted. But where do these beings exist, in your space-time structure or in ours? They live in your space-time structure on a world in the spiral galaxy which you call Galaxy NGC 2770, which is about 12 billion 12 billion years old. This is the spiral galaxy we came to on your great journey through a time jump of about 90 million years back into the past, where you could observe the huge explosion of a supernova at the outer edge of the galaxy. At that time, however, there were not yet higher life forms in that galaxy. Spiral Galaxy NGC 2770. And that is where it is supposed to go back in time again? Yes, the supernova no longer exists, but you may still be able to see its most distant effects. That supernova would have been something I could have put in writing after I returned from the Great Journey, like so many other things. Yes, but you did not want me to call up all my observations and experiences from your memories and write them down. But it will be a special experience for me to be able to fly with you again into that area and observe the chimeras. It would also be interesting if I could talk to one of the life forms, because I assume that they are able to speak. But how long does it take to bridge the 90 million light years and return here? And we will only need a short time for the undertaking, although the question is how long you will be able to speak to one or more of the beings. Communication will be possible through our language converters. But it is supposed to be a purely private enterprise without you describing our trip. I have my reasons for this, as well as after your great journey, why you were not allowed to write down everything you observed and experienced. Ah, uh, the woman planet Seraton. Four hundred and sixty third contact Thursday, the twenty fourth of April, two thousand eight, sixteen forty eight HRS. Well, then, I would like to ask about what your daughter Simyase said to me once, and indeed, that somewhere in your space time configuration, a planet exists where women live exclusively. Unfortunately, Simyase gave me no further explanations about that. I still know that in those days we spoke about the Amazons for which reason she spoke about this planet of women. Now I would like to ask you why only women live on that planet, and how it is possible, in spite of that, that they have descendants, as Simyase said. That which my daughter said to you is right. All over that planet, which is named Seraton, there are no male human beings, rather actually only female. And that they bear descendants in spite of that is because already, for more than 1,600 years, they have developed spermatozoa from stem cells, with which they fertilize themselves and thereby bring about descendants. With the successful development of the spermatozoa, only spermatozoa which guarantee female offspring are selected to use for procreation. And can the gender of the offspring actually already be thereby determined? And that is right. Then are you saying that in fact only females are therefore born on the planet Seraton? And yes. And how did it come to be that the women there arrived at this practice? Uh, the world of men was very gewaltatig towards the world of women, and also constantly led bloody wars and stirred up strife with all possible means. Finally, that was too much for the women. Consequently, they found means and ways, in the manner I have mentioned, whereby they gave birth only to female offspring. So it came to be that there were fewer and fewer men, and they finally died out. And I assume that the women there certainly live a good and peaceful life. Uh, that is also right, which can be attributed not in the least to the fact that the entire world of women lives by the creational laws and recommendation as they have been passed down from Nocodemian. A uh, two extraterrestrial enemy races. Two hundred and forty sixth contact Saturday, the nineteenth of June, nineteen ninety three, twenty three seventeen HRS.
and it was really very important, and my presence was indeed imperative. My task was to create a colony on an uninhabited planet called Cathan, in the space area IDAM, known on Earth in this space-time structure as the Spiral Nebula NGC 2997, at a distance of 45 million light-years. I was also busy in the space area Noser, where we also founded a new colony. This also happened on an uninhabited planet called Nasadan. The space region Noser is a galaxy which is 16 million light-years away from the Sol system in this space-time structure, and which is referred to as M83 in earthly astronomy science. Then the spiral nebula and the galaxy are not in your space-time structure, if I have understood correctly. However, the question remains as to why you are founding colonies if you have enough space on your planet, since you do not tend towards overpopulation, as is the case on the Earth. Hey, the colonies were founded to separate two enemy races that threatened to destroy each other on their home planets by waging endless war against each other. Capable of both nuclear technology and the first spaceflight, they attacked each other's planets and brought them very close to the danger of destruction. And since our Federation is in charge of these two planets and of the inhabitants, we decided, according to the advice of the High Council, to transplant the two contentious peoples in order to guarantee their continued existence to the other and peace-loving peoples of the two planets. They also dominate the first space flight, but they do not pose any danger. However, the fallible ones, 124 million of one people and 106 million of the other, were transferred to the planets I mentioned in the space areas Idem and Noser, where they will live from now on, without knowing the whereabouts of the other people. Moreover, it is impossible for the transplanted ones of both peoples to fly to other planets for many hundreds of years to come, because care was taken to ensure that the next inhabited planets are more than 130 light-years away from the colonies, so that they cannot be reached by the resettled ones. On the one hand, because their space technology is only just developed to the extent that distances of at most 430 million kilometers can be covered, while the age of the colonists is still very low with an average of 83 years. Spiral Galaxies NGC 2997 and M83 The Cassiopeia Constellation One hundred and forty second contact Tuesday, the third of february nineteen eighty one, twenty three fifty three HRS. The few human races in the area of the Cassiopeia constellation in another space time configuration are well known to us, but they have no resemblance to the life forms mentioned in this letter. Also, their flying apparatus do not correspond in any manner to the kind described here, and besides, their technology is not so far and highly developed that they could, with their own flying apparatuses, reach the Earth. The technology of one of the two races is presently developed so far that they prepare just the first flight attempts to outer space, and they stand just a little bit behind Earth's technological development. The second race, which is on another planet behind the Cassiopeia constellation, only has flying apparatuses that master their own planetary space somewhat certainly. Among these facts is the further complication that both of these races of human life forms exist in a different time plane in relation to the Earth. Like I said, so separated from the time plane that is known to the Earth human being and in which they live. So when the human beings of the Cassiopeia constellation one day master space travel, they still will not be able for a long time to penetrate into the time plane in which the Earth humans live their existence. Aha! And in our time plane known to us, no human life forms exist. Who would be capable of spaceflight in Cassiopeia? That is to say, in that area? I'm sure there are human beings there, but these are not yet advanced in spaceflight or are not yet so far advanced that they could carry out journeys through universal space. Like on the Earth, secret stations of foreign planet human races exist there on their planet, which do not, however, practice direct contact with the planet's inhabitants. The Kohan people
249th contact, Monday the 13th of June, 1994, 2336, HRS, E. This was also the case about six years ago, with Kohan's people, on the planet in the Centauri area, which had 120 billion, 120 billion, humans, and which is somewhat delayed to our time and space. Uh, yes, that is how it was explained to you. Do you know the number of humans who were wiped out? And how was that humanity decimated? Only 1.26 billion, 1 billion, 260 million humans still live there today. The population decimation took place exactly according to your statements you just made. But why could they accumulate or give birth to so many humans before nature and life drastically intervened? Uh, not all humans on the planet itself were born there, but only 3.7 billion, 3 billion, 700 million. Another 62 billion, 62 billion came from planets other than refugees, from 26 different worlds, which were eliminated by an interplanetary war after humans could still flee. Within a few years, the great mass of humanity on the planet in question doubled, while the epidemics and catastrophes eradicated billions of humans early on, before the final great deaths began. A planet a cart. Four hundred and seventy six contact Tuesday, the third of February, two thousand nine, zero oh one HRS. Such an occurrence, according to your earlier explanation, on the seventeenth of July, nineteen seventy five, during my great journey, in fact, already is to have threatened an approximately Earth sized planet named Ackhart through overpopulation stupidity. Because in 1975, already 23 billion, 23 billion human beings lived there. To my knowledge, the inhabitants of a cart belong to your federation, as well as others from other regions there. Also Kohun and Athar. And what you say corresponds to that which corresponds to the facts. The population of the planet Akart belong to our federation, as well as also the population of the worlds of Proxima Centauri, and others from there and other local regions of space around there, from which several of them have come to the Earth. However, all of these worlds belong in our space-time configuration. Consequently, they also possess several of our technologies, like, for example, that technology with which they are able to bridge the time barrier and come into your space-time configuration. The population of a cart, however, no more exists since the year 2007, because in the only 32 years from 1975 to 2007, their total population had increased to 34 billion, 34 billion, when through their stupidity, like also is apparent with the terrestrial population, nature and the climate were completely destroyed, when, in the end, an oxygen collapse and an atmosphere collapse occurred, as you have described this. As a result, all life was wiped out on that planet. However, you still have advised and helped them, as you said at that time. Unfortunately, our advice was just disregarded and not followed, as well as also our help was declined. Only then, when there was nothing more to give, the humans came to think things over. But then it was already too late. As a result, we only could just save as many humans as possible. Unfortunately, only 116 million, and resettle them to other worlds. A Athar and Kohun mentioned above in the 476 contact report come from the area of Proxima Centauri, from another space-time structure, which is about five light-years away from the Earth. The population of the worlds of Proxima Centauri belong to the Pleiarans Federation. For more information about Athar and Kohun, see Contact Report 060. Ah, uh, things to know. Um, when the universe was formed, there were originally 343 different human skin colors. Currently on Earth, we have remnants of five different kinds of human beings who are of extraterrestrial origin. An African Indian, also Middle Eastern. Native Americans, also Latin. Asians and whites, for example, like Albert Schweitzer, Albert Einstein. Pythagoras, etc., because the majority of the white race on Earth is descended from the life form Adelobacillus crumptoni. A 269th contact Sunday, the 4th of October, 1998, 750 HRS.
The long explanation short question now is whether you know whether Pythagoras was a pure earthborn or an immigrant from the depths of the world space. By which, of course, I do not mean Pythagoras as a person, but his spiritual form? His spirit form was of extraterrestrial origin and came from the Henoch lineage, from the lineage of the ancient Lyrians. 38th Contact, Thursday, the 13th of November, 1975, 936, HRS. Albert Einstein Germany slash Switzerland slash USA was in direct contact with extraterrestrial intelligences and was also an ancient spiritual life form incarnated by them on the Earth. Albert Schweitzer slash France slash Africa. The information is the same as for Albert Einstein. Both persons stood on the same level of consciousness and spirit, hence the striking similarity. They came from Mars, the former planet Malona, the constellation of Lyra Vega and the Sirius region. The planets of the two latter locations are shifted from our space-time configuration, which means that they cannot be seen from Earth. Over a long period of time, people from the Sirius region also established themselves on planet Mars and Malona. On Mars, there were pyramids and space stations, etc., built by those early civilizations. These artifacts were eliminated a couple of years ago by forces from the Sirius region. The Chinese and Japanese races are the youngest inhabitants of our planet Earth. They are originally from the planet Kudra of the Nisan star system, but they emigrated to planet Nisan of the Lyra system star two and a half million years ago, and then 26,000 years ago. Some of them emigrated to Earth. From them, the Chinese and Japanese people developed as we know them today. Currently, the Earth is overpopulated by a mixture of human races with terrestrial and extraterrestrial ancestors, evolving as many human civilizations have done in other places in the universe. The life form from which the human being developed is known by the archaeologists of Earth as Adelobacillus cromptoni. This creature developed into the so-called primates. From these primates evolved the human being lineage and the ape lineage, both of which developed separately from each other. Human beings and apes continued developing as completely separate creatures, each on their own path to progress and evolution. For more detailed information, see https slash ww. YouTube. Comwatch. V equal sign. JRCB Messi V3 IY and feature equal sign MB underscore logo. A guest article by Burke Gumus.